Last week, there was a tropical storm headed for New Orleans that had all of us Katrina veterans worried that this might be the next big one. Spoiler alert, it wasn't, at least not for most people. For me, it was pretty fucked up. My mom was taking care of my seven-year-old nephew, Jaden, that whole week while my brother was out of town. When she heard about the encroaching storm, she called and asked if I would stay over the following night, which was when it was predicted to make landfall, so I could help out just in case things got really bad. I spent most of the next evening waging a successful nerf campaign against my nephew, which left Jaden fairly exhausted, and my mom didn't have much trouble putting him to bed when we were done. She then shouted a good night downstairs to me from the top of the steps and retired to her own room. I had planned on staying up and writing throughout the night so someone was conscious if and when the shit started to hit. And about an hour later, as I was sitting out on the back porch listening to all of the rain and the wind howling through the narrow alley behind my mother's house, I started to feel justified in my concern. Unfortunately, it wasn't the weather that I had needed to worry about. I gave the slanted wall of rain just beyond the porch's roof one last worried glance and then re-entered the house, pulling the back door closed behind me and shutting out the din of the storm to hear the unevenly paced footsteps of someone trudging down the stairs leading into the foyer. I crossed the den and turned as I entered the foyer to see my mom descending the stairs with her eyes closed. I let out a relieved sigh, silently scolding myself for not realizing the telltale sign of her zombie-like footsteps. My mother had been prone to sleepwalking for as long as I could remember, and I learned early on that the best thing to do was simply stay close and wait for her to wake up herself. She had a tight grip on the handrail and was taking long pauses between each step. But eventually, my unconscious mother made it all the way to the bottom of the stairs. I followed her across the foyer, my mom now moving at a slightly more confident pace as she approached the front door. She stood there and closed the door for a moment, seeming to hesitate. And then she spoke. Who is it? My mother asked in the distinct muddled tone of a sleepwalker. She paused to listen to the response she must have heard in her dream. It seemed to confuse her. I was standing directly next to my mom at this point and watched as she suddenly furred her brow. Her eyelids flickered a few times, making me think that she might be coming out of it. But then she continued. What does that mean? My mom replied with an incredious tone. She paused once more to listen, and this time, the answer she received left her frowning. When she spoke again, there was a, a mounting concern in her voice. Do I have to? She asked the closed door. And after another moment of hesitation, my mother reached out and unlocked the bolt. Her hand was around the knob and was just starting to turn it when every instinct I had told me that I needed to stop her. I slapped my left hand against the door, holding it closed as I reached out with my right to relock the bolt. The sound of it sliding back into place caused my mother's eyelids to flicker once more. And then they shot open as she was suddenly awoken. My newly conscious mom inched her wide gaze up to the ornate window above the front door prompting me to do the same. That's too tall. She said as I spotted the rain-soaked hat, filling the lower half of that window, a window which was at least eight feet up that wall. I felt a hand squeezing my arm as I tore my attention away from the window just in time to catch my mother as her eyes rolled up into the back of her head and she started to faint. I lowered my once more unconscious mom to the foyer floor as I reverted my attention back to that window and the hat that appeared to be perched atop a head of the 
inhumanly tall figure standing outside. What sounded like a very large fist began to knock against the door with a quick, deliberate rhythm. Knock. 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 The pounding seemed to echo my rapidly beating heart as it began to hammer against the inside of my chest. I slowly stood, careful not to make a sound as I kept my eyes fixated on that window above the door. After several moments that felt like decades, the figure stood on its tiptoes so it could look through the ornate window. I glimpsed its eyes, which were two glowing blue embers, half buried in the darkness. But the wide brim of the figure's hat shrouded the rest of its face in an unnaturally dark shadow. I pressed myself against the front door and crouched down, silently praying that I had gotten out of its sight before the figure was able to spot me. I held my breath and began to count off the seconds as they passed. One, two, three, four, five. I could hear the figure's movements through the door as it slowly turned and started away. I let out a relieved sigh, but the feeling didn't last as I heard the thing's heavy footsteps heading around to the back of the house. I recalled how my mother sleepwalking had distracted me when I entered from the back porch a minute ago, causing me to forget to lock the back door. I stood up and was halfway across the den before my mad dash to the back was nearly cut short by a rogue ottoman. I almost pulled off a full-on Dick Van Dyke, but managed to regain my footing at the last second. I made it to the back door in what I assumed was a photo finish, I quickly turned the bolt, expecting to hear the figure's lumbering footsteps approaching any moment now. But after a full minute of standing there, pressed against that door, and listening to my own panicked breathing, I finally realized that that wasn't going to happen. After a brief internal debate, I unlocked the door and opened it a crack to peer out at the vacant back porch. Through the roar of the swelling storm, I could just barely make out the scraping sound coming from the roof of the porch, which was positioned directly below the guest bedroom window, which was where Jaden was sleeping. As I sprinted back into the foyer and rounded the foot of the stairs, my still unconscious mom began to mutter in vaguely panicked voice, Hurry! It's up there with my grandbaby. I know I'm going, I shouted in a tone that I hadn't intended to sound quite so annoyed as I bounded up the stairs. Jaden was already awake and talking to someone as I reached the landing of the second floor. Can you show me? I heard him ask, and my adrenaline must have gone through the roof at that point because I only remember the next few moments as a series of blurred snapshots. I reached the door to the guest bedroom and tore it open to see Jaden standing at the window overlooking the back porch's roof. The window was open and the figure's blue ember eyes were peering in just from outside. And jutting out from about where I assumed the figure's mouth would be was a large, dripping appendage that resembled an insectile proboscis. Something at the end of this proboscis was emitting a bright strobe light effect that seemed to be lulling Jaden into a hypnotic trance. And then something really weird happened. As I started across the bedroom. After the initial flash from that strobe light washed out my vision, the resulting darkness brought with it an image of something almost too abstract to be decipherable at first glance. But then there was another flash and I started to understand what I was seeing. I was being told a story. In pictures. A story about something both ancient and horrible crashing down from the cosmos and burying itself at the bottom of a primordial ocean. This 
ancient, horrible something was on the run from some other something that was apparently even more horrible. So the first something used its power to relocate the newly formed world it was hiding on to a more ideal distance from the nearest star. Aligning the planet, which would one day be known as Earth, to eventually produce life and thus to feed its eternal craving for the universe's one and only constant. Blood. During the next strobe flash, I saw that I was finally within reach of Jordan and pulled him out of the range of the figure, just as it was about to make contact with my nephew's neck, and then I hurried to the window and slammed it shut on the retracting appendage. The figure emitted an ear-splitting screech, and it used its massive hands to yank it loose before skittering off into the night. Its defeated sobbing all but lost against the howling wind. The tropical storm began to veer away from us not too long after that, and by the next morning the sun was out and the sky was vast and empty blue that seemed almost condescending compared to the weather we had been expecting mere hours earlier. I talked with Jaden later that day to find out what he remembered about the previous night. Thankfully, the answer to that question was not much. He did claim that he had been the ultimate victor of our nerf war, but I wrote that off as exhaustion. For the record though, he did not win. I won. By a lot. I did some research and learned about the town Polly's Island, located on the coast of South Carolina, which is another stretch of the continental US that has to regularly worry about hurricanes. This particular town has the source of an urban legend known as the Gray Man, who is described as a tall man in a large brimmed hat who likes to go around knocking on people's doors during severe thunderstorms. Although the Polly's Island Gray Man is considered to be a generally benevolent being, my theory is that there are actually many Gray Men out there. Maybe as many as there are violent storms each year. And the Polly's Island is merely the exception that proves the rule. Either way, I recommend that you don't fuck with otherworldly entities as a whole. Not to sound like a bigot, but they don't belong here. Ghouls, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry, it's kind of short compared to the other ones I've been doing. But it was July 4th weekend. I totally forgot. But at the same time, I really like this one. So yeah, let me know if you liked it. Because I thought it was interesting. Especially that it was based on an urban legend. And urban legends are kind of like my Friday video thing. I thought it was a nice tie-in. But question of the day, ghouls. Since it is July 4th, do you like fireworks? Yes or no? And why? I like fireworks just because they're pretty and they're loud. But my son is in the middle. He likes fireworks, but he doesn't like that they're so loud. So just let me know in the comments. But as always, my last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen, as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.